This is Don Ye. This is a legend. This is the man I kind of came up under musically. Uh, Wait. <laughs> Percy Beatty. And you are silly. <laughs> I honestly only really knew of him uh, in the gospel sector. This man's all over the place. So, like, just to name a few, just to name a few people that you worked with, other than gospel, yeah. R. Kelly, mm -hmm. probably the probably the main one. You know, I was a co-writer. I believe I can fly. Mm -hmm. There's the Isleys, there's Whitney, Michael McDonald. <laughs> You're coming out with your, your latest project, which yeah. is uh, Kingdom Inspiration. When does that drop? That's going to drop in January. January. Hey, tell us a little bit about like what inspired the whole... Well, the Kingdom Inspiration record, man, is really one of those records that, that um, was born out of my own personal experiences. Mm -hmm. The ups, the downs, the good, the bad, the ugly... You know the, the victories. It's it's all of that. The idea is to really get people to back to being inspired about life, and I think you find out what you really have when you face a challenge. Yeah. From what I've heard from the album, there's a lot of substance in there. So what what do you think like makes that what makes you stand out? Yeah, I don't I don't you know I grew up in a different time. It was really about having something to say mm -hmm. and knowing how to say it. Mm -hmm. When I first started working with the Winans. Uh, Marvin Winans, man, would take uh, my songs and take the opportunity to pull them apart mm -hmm. and, uh, and ask questions and say, okay, what was you saying here? And, you know, and it was it was very intriguing for me because nobody had done that before. Mm -hmm. Think about children, you know. Mm -hmm. Would you send your child out in 10 below weather with no jacket on? Mm -hmm. So a song is the same. Thing. I used to play the piano every morning. You know, for no reason at all, and would tell God, "This is just me giving my gift back to you." Mm -hmm. You know, this is a gift He gave me, and and that I need to give it back to Him first. So I used to, I used to do that all the time. If it's anything that separates me, I would say it's it's my passion to serve. It's my passion to, to make sure that that I'm using what I have to be a blessing to God's people, regardless of where they are, and that's churched on or unchurched. Crouch? Yeah. Andre Crouch was the father to me. He introduced us to the contemporary chord structure mm -hmm. to me. Mm -hmm. Andre was the one. Yeah. You know, a lot of those changes we play now, mm -hmm. I, I, they came from him. You know? Right. You know, a lot of the young musicians don't know it. They think they're getting it from us. Mm -hmm. You know, but they it came from those guys who right. came before us. Right. You know, you guys like to play a lot of abstract chordings and changings and voicings and different things like that like, just play it where it works right. <laughs> right. That, that's the other thing i wanted to talk to you about musically you have a lot of discipline but to some of us musicians we feel like well if we're not doing a bunch we ain't playing right you know what i mean right. and we ain't doing a lot we ain't playing but what i've started learning is that sometimes well in most cases less is always more and um but I'm just listening to your, I got a chance to see you play uh, the day before yesterday. Mm -hmm. You're just disciplined, period. Just as a musician, mm -hmm. you know, just disciplined, period. He was just sitting there shedding. He was, and it was very beasty, believe it or not. But it was just very disciplined. And uh, where, where, when did that start for you? I mean, was there ever a point where you just was like all over the place and then? You know, you know, um... When I started playing for Reverend Milton Brunson's church, mm -hmm. I played for the church before I played for the Tommies. Okay. And in playing for the church, I remember playing one Sunday, and across the pulpit, he, he said on the microphone, he said, you're too busy. It humbled me. Mm -hmm. Not that I thought that I was a lot. At that moment, you know, it was like, okay, even though I knew other things to play, mm -hmm. and I could play them, mm -hmm. I always felt like, let me just play what the moment calls for. Mm -hmm. What does the moment call for? Mm -hmm. Does it call for me to be big? Mm -hmm. Does it call for me to be small? Mm -hmm. Does it call for me to be emotional? Does it call for me to be, you know what I'm saying? Right. So, 
you know, because if there was somebody singing, and but everybody saying, "When did you hear that chord? Mm -hmm. But did you hear that keyboard? Did you hear that run?" Mm -hmm. At that point, I've become a distraction because it's not about me. Mm -hmm. You know, it's really not about you know what I'm playing or what I'm. <laughs> y'all listening? I want y'all to listen. I listen. got more gigs from being the guy who knew how to accompany than I did ever. Mm -hmm. By being flashy, right. because they say, "Well, man, you know, Percy don't have it. He can, you know." And I laugh because mm -hmm. the thing is, is I've forgotten more music than most of these young guys know. Mm -hmm. I've played sessions that were, you know, where people wasn't even speaking a lick of English, mm -hmm. but I went in and did their sessions based upon the fact that they liked how I played, mm -hmm. and they liked the fact that I I kind of added to what was going on. Mm -hmm. I take pride in mm -hmm. feeling like I give artists what they want. Mm -hmm. That's a that's a big deal to me. It's a it's a big deal to feel good about walking away saying, you know what, I did what needed to be done. Mm -hmm. And and when you get the opportunity to shine, mm -hmm. you got something to do. Right. You know, you got some place to go. Mm -hmm. But a lot of the stuff you know nowadays, man, it's really more about the musician than it is the people who are singing. Yeah. And to me, that's that's back. There's a maturity that comes. Mm -hmm. You know, that has to come. That, that 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 takes you to a place where you understand that I don't have to reveal everything I know. I don't have to play everything I know. So right. a lot of times with me, you won't hear me stretch. You won't mm -hmm. hear me flash. Right. You know, and I like to. I love it. Mm -hmm. I think it's incredible. But I know, you know, that it's really about, you know, what, what moment are we trying to create here? Mm -hmm. And what what is it going to take to create that moment? Do I need to play simple triads mm -hmm. rather than 13ths, mm -hmm. the ninths, mm -hmm. 11ths? Right. You know, uh, you know what was it called? What does it call for? Those mm -hmm. are things that you always got to consider. Right, very good. You just say a lot of what people been trying to say for a long time, mm -hmm. even musically and just as even as a musician. I can appreciate that. Mm -hmm. I know that I I still have a long way to go and I have a lot of things to learn. Mm -hmm. You know, even just musically from a musical standpoint. And so. different sound like just the tone of the record and mm -hmm. each song has a different flavor mm -hmm. does that come to you as you're writing or do you write the song and then figure out what how you want to bring it across later most of the time is writing the song and then figure it out like some yeah. of it I'm already I've already kind of thought out and, and mm -hmm. have some idea and then some of it is is happening as we're in the process okay which is you know probably the most uh, probably the best way because it's organic. It's a natural thing as mm -hmm. opposed to, you know, let's try to fit this here, fit that there. Mm -hmm. I've always been a fan of marrying electronic stuff mm -hmm. with acoustic stuff. Mm -hmm. Always. I mean, that's that's probably my the Maurice White and Earth, Wind and Fire influence, yes. the David Foster influence. Mm -hmm. um, so I've always been a fan of trying to marry and merge those two worlds together mm -hmm. simply because I thought it was you know, it was just a neat way to kind of identify my production stuff. Mm -hmm. A lot of what you hear on that record is a marriage between the two. Okay. <laughs> as far as your acoustic instrumentation, name some of the people that you had working the record. Um, Calvin Rogers, Maurice Fitzgerald, Rodney East, Joey Wolfolk, Al Willis, Richard Gibbs. Um, all of these guys are guys that are... Uh, Elvin Negron, Kiko, mm -hmm. these are all guys who, you know, were part of my circle and still a part of my circle, mm -hmm. who we came together, man, and with no money, you mm -hmm. know, mm -hmm. and put this record together. Mm -hmm. We just, you I know, just believe that that's why this record also has the sound that it sounds, because it's a whole lot of love in it. Mm -hmm. It's a whole lot of love. Yeah, it. I can hear that. A whole lot of love. Analog or digital, recording-wise, what's, what, what, do you have a preference or does, does, you know, it's, it's in the end, it's based on you. Mm -hmm. It's really on your own ears. I think I use, I try to use the best of both worlds. Mm -hmm. You know, there's some things that analog is just wonderful. In. Mm -hmm. 
And then there's some things that digital is pretty incredible in. Mm-hmm. So I just try to take the incredible and marry it with the wonderful. Mm-hmm. And, you know, and come up with wonder digital. Right. <laughs> wonder, wonder, <laughs> wonder, whatever it is. You know, you know the word I'm trying to say. But no. Wonder credible. Right, wonder credible. There yeah, it is. Yeah. Wonder credible. You know, I listen to a lot of old music mm-hmm. because there was a lot of care. Mm-hmm. So I think those records tend to sound a lot better than a lot of the records in the box records today. Right, right. You know, now I've heard some guys who would do stuff in the box that's absolutely incredible. Mm-hmm. But I'm I'm pretty sure that if you went through the signal chain and checked out how mm-hmm. you know everything evolved, there's an analog process somewhere, somewhere in there. In there, yeah. you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Mm-hmm. So, which I try to do at the same time. You know, mm-hmm. I'm using the SSL console. Mm-hmm. You know, so I sum out. You know, my stems, you know, mm-hmm. I just sum them out, mm-hmm. you know, because I want to warm up what's happening. Yeah, so. This record is going to be a collector's item, by the way, because I'll never be in that same place I was in when this stuff was written. I won't be there anymore. You know, I'm humbled to even, you know, be sitting here talking to you. This guy is incredible. <laughs> See, YouTube we- viewers, y'all already know he's <laughs> incredible. He's incredible. That means a lot coming from a legend. Yeah, get it? Kingdom Inspiration. Uh, thank y'all, viewers. I've gotten a lot of more uh, subscribers, you know, since I last thank y'all. So thank y'all. I'll be sure to put a little something together for y'all or something later on. Something to say thank you. Special thanks to Shiloh behind the camera. Praise the Lord. She's been standing there for a minute. And so I, I know her. Yes! <laughs> her endurance is, you know, so we're going to... Try to go get some uh, fried rice and egg rolls or something so uh, we can replenish the standing strength <laughs> that has depleted. So, <laughs> <laughs> All right, y'all, take care.